think it's, it's wonderful that the Irish Repertory Theatre are doing Boussicol. Here was a man who ruled Broadway for half a century. He was one of the great innovators in the theatre. Same arms on our escutcheon, an empty purse falling through a hole in a pocket. Motto, requiescat in pace. The play takes place over three days. It centres around a, a love triangle, which is Sir Harcourt Courtley, um, who is engaged to be married to young Grace Harkaway. He little thinks he was the subject of my meditations. Grace Harkaway is um, a young woman who has a really interesting decision before her in life. You know, for being a comedy, her life is a little bit tragic. Her mother is dead and her father gave her a choice between poverty or marrying a man three times her age in order to um, expand his own property after his death. Not a bit. I thought so. Who said I put too much on? How comes it courtly that you manage He's to... a man of means. He, uh, he takes his boudoir and his etiquette and his toilette immensely seriously. These are the sort of premier activities in his life, and of course, love. Mr. Basil, Mr. Hamilton, Lady Gay Spanker. Oh, <laughs> devilish fine woman. She's a devilish fine woman. Oh, you mustn't think any of the liberties I take with mine. Sir Harcourt has a son, Sir Charles, who is a bit of a gad about town. He's, he's a very rich, very spoiled, I'd say, young man. He's sort of living his life one drunken night to the next. His son goes to the country in disguise to get away from his debts and from women and so on and stuff that's hounding him in, in the city. He goes to the country. And unfortunately, instead of her being taken with Sir Harcourt, she is actually taken with my character, Charles. Hey. Madam, there is a subject brought the fate my future life, but you must pardon my lack of delicacy, should it too hasty. We have all of these love stories coming together, and in the midst of that sort of through line, we have uh, the introduction of all of these zany, zany, zany characters. We have a meddling lawyer, who is appropriately called Metal. We've got uh, Lady Gay Spanker's aging husband, Dolly, who barely ever knows where he is or who he's married to. And uh, they serve to interrupt the story as it progresses and also to create the, exactly the kind of chaos that we want in a farce like this. I love the way that farce gives you the freedom to look out at the audience and talk to them and be silly with them. You form a group, you form a family, you form an extension. The audience is an extension of what's going on on, on the stage. Oh, only once. Only once, only once. Then the animal ran away with me. Oh. You would not have him walk. Oh. Um, Charlotte, our director, has done a phenomenal job of putting everybody, I think, in exactly the place that they should be. And um, I just feel that everyone's lifting everybody else up. There's no better feeling than that in the theater. There. Damn me, I'll puzzle the two penny postmen. I'll deprive them of their right of disturbing the neighbor. I think it's joyous. I think it's fun. There's a lot of humor. I also think there's a beautiful love story. I think there's some really interesting things that are said um, about relationships between men and women. I think about sort of society, town, and country. Ultimately, it's full of joy and um, a huge generosity of spirit and love. And it's feel good and it's frothy and zesty and full of relish. What you're seeing is a frivolous souffle of a seasonal entertainment. Max, give me your hand, old boy. <laughs> He is glad to see me. There's no fawning pretense about that squeeze. <laughs> I mean, and, and what more fun to come down to the Irish rap on a cold, snowy evening and start to, you know, just begin to laugh as you walk in the door. If you've got any sensibility to the pheromones coming over the footlights, you know, as the saying goes, uh, just be good. And if you can't be good, be careful. And if you can't be careful, name it after me. Can we say that? We can't say that. You can edit all that out, can't you? Yeah.